Okay, I just want to start off with uh, just kind of a, a popcorn discussion. Um, not a long story, okay, but just various jobs you've had in your life just by name. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give you an example of what I mean. Um, tilling gardens, farmer, um, uh, janitorial services, um, uh, machine machine shop, uh, not a machinist, but in that category. Um, then uh, therapist in a hospital, then ministry. Okay, in my lifetime. So somebody else give me an example. Give me an example of things you've done in your lifetime, work wise. Receptionist. Receptionist. Okay. Factory worker. Factory worker. Sales. Sales clerk. Account. Accountant. Huh? Plumbing. Plumbing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to see you walk in the door. <laughs> Sorry. It's kind of like the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Bus driver. Bus driver. Teacher. Teacher. A couple of them. Factory worker. Factory worker. Huh? Factory worker. Teacher. Government employee. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, kind of different things in our different stages in our life, don't we? Okay. Hey, anybody? Any other thoughts? Things you've done in life? Like retail sales, mowed lawns. Okay, mowed lawns, retail sales, jury clerk. Is that what you did? Lifeguard. So we all have various experiences, right? I don't want to leave anybody out. Anybody else want to share something? I don't want to leave anybody out. You know, we've got some military folks and that type of thing. Um, you know, all have different aspects of life. So the question today is about, um, one of the questions that we're looking at is about work and integrity. Um, and Colossians 3, if you turn there to verse 22, we're gonna, I'm going to read this section. Then we'll come back and talk about it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Flip my page when I wasn't looking. <clears throat> All right. Slaves obey your human masters and everything. Don't work only while they're watching as, as people pleasers. Kind of goes along with what the sermon was about, but work wholeheartedly. Fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, do it from the heart as something done for the Lord, not for people. Knowing that you'll receive the reward of an, as an inheritance from the Lord, you serve uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. For, your, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong he's done, and there is no favoritism. Masters, deal with your slaves justly and fairly, since you know that you too have a master in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, stay alert in it, with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for those also for us that God may open a door to us for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains, so that I may make it, so that I may make it known as I should. Act wisely toward outsiders, making the most of every opportunity. Let your speech be always gracious, seasoned with salt, so you may know how you should answer each person. So he starts off talking about slaves and masters, you know, in, in, in a, at a brush level, we oh, that doesn't apply to that. We don't have slavery, we don't have masters, we don't have people like that. But if you look at the principle of the thing, then you can, you can apply it to work. Does that make sense? Uh, actually, there is slavery in our culture. You know, there's slavery in, slavery in our nation. This takes a different uh, uh, spiel. Or, uh, the sex trade is horrible. Just can't say enough terrible about it, and it's it's it is a form of slavery, no matter what you say. Um, but that's a sad. But slavery, slaves obey your masters and everything. So how is that applicable to work? Applicable to work? We're not slaves, but the principle is bosses or uh, people in authority over us at work. Uh, would we use the word obey? 
Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Probably not. And I, you know, we're, we're more laid back as far as a bay. You know, that wouldn't be the word we would use. Um, Maybe more compliant. Be, yeah. Give in or, or give yourself Obey. over to your, yeah. 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 And we don't use it in our, in our culture. I mean, who do you obey other than God? Right, but we're getting to that in a minute about how God's involved in this. Hmm? <laughs> the authorities, yeah, yeah. Well, you have a choice, but there are consequences, right? <laughs> okay. Most of the places you have a contract, and you have work rules, you got to adhere to. And if you don't, there are consequences, right? There you go. And it says, then he says. And do it not only when their eyes on you to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Hmm. You mean the Lord's concerned about my work? Uh, the Lord's concerned about, you know, sometimes we want to divide life into spiritual life and, and physical life. We want to say, oh, that's my work and this is my church and this is my. It doesn't work that way, right? Huh? Hypocrisy. Yeah, kind of the hypocrisy Josh was talking about, but it, it doesn't work that way. It's all one thing. Um, and do it now. So the question then is, what do you do when no one's looking? Same thing you do when you're looking. It's hopefully, 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 right? We fight you know, that all the time. Do what? We fight that all the time. We do fight that all the time. Yeah, you know, none of us here are perfect. I'm, you know. If you have a, if you're perfect at work and in life, don't raise your hand. That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> but but you know none of us here are perfect in that, in that in that persuasion. But what we do when nobody is looking, what's that called? Anybody know what that's called? Say it again. Integrity. Integrity. Your integrity is what matters in this passage. So we're talking about integrity in life, and, and specifically today we're talking about workplace, and then a little bit later we'll talk about. Uh, spiritual life. We're not. Let's see, I just use. I just did it myself. We'll talk about other other aspects of our life that, that have a, a implication there. Um, why? Why is it important to be who you are, whether anybody's looking or not? Say it again. We're responsible to God. He's involved in this thing, uh, and he says. Um, Actually, a passage says, with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. So my work and my and my uh, daily life is in reverence to the Lord, no matter what I'm doing. Um, you know, sometimes it's, like, uh, yeah. people, people that don't agree with us, or things like that, you know, like, most of the time, I'm not saying most of the time, they like to know that they can count on where you stand on certain things. Yeah. They're not just kind of going here, there, everywhere. Even they don't agree with you, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Sometimes they appreciate that. I'm glad you said that, David, because I'm glad you said that because that's where I'm going. So is it always correct to to comply with a with a, a boss? No. Say it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what if your boss tells you something that's against the Lord's will? You know, what if David's in his military commander says, you know, do this. And he said, oh, wait a minute. What's that called when you get in that position? Ethical dilemma. Okay. You, know, you got this issue. I'm, I'm being told to do this, but I don't know about this and I can't do that. I can't. So, you know, we get in those positions of dilemma and who's who comes out on top in those dilemmas, hopefully. The Lord. The Lord. You know, so that's that's kind of the. It's not always comply. Um, you know, you might get a whooping in this application to the slave here, but you do the right thing, right? We might lose some income. We might. You get the picture. So we we have this issue of reverence for the Lord above all. It says uh, continues in verse twenty three. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know you receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it's the Lord Christ you are serving. Um, I 
we can, we tend to see our income as a reward, don't we, for work? How's the Lord involved in our reward? Well, we lay up treasures in heaven. Okay. And that's so the main thing. Eventually in heaven? Yeah. Not just worried about the best physical life. Okay. <clears throat> lay up treasures in heaven. Uh, David mentioned earlier you get to respect the people when you do the right thing. That's just a consequence of doing the right thing. People respect you and care, but they come to you. Anybody have people come to you at work that, that surprised you, that they're asking you questions, that is filling you out for what's the right thing to do? And you kind of get that. that it's, it's a positive consequence of doing the right thing. And there are other consequences of doing the wrong thing, right? You're the guy nobody wants to talk to. <laughs> but... Uh, so and it, it, he continues in chapter four. He says, um, I'm sorry, verse 25. I want you to look at 25 with me for a minute. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there is no favoritism. Here's my question Why is that sentence in there? It kind of just comes out of the blue. Everything you judge will be judged you according to your your actions. Mm -hmm. Evil comes evil. Light shows light. Okay. Brings light to it. Okay. Is anybody struck with why that just shows up? It's a bridge. It's a bridge. Okay. Yeah. Tell me, talk more about it, Greg. What's the bridge to? Okay. So you're talking to the slaves themselves. They're right after this, you talk to the masters. And so he's saying, he's saying, there's no favoritism. So how does God see bosses and employees and, and slaves and masters and and uh, presidents and senators or how does God see all that? Hmm? We're all the same. We're all the same. You know, sometimes we put people on pedestals, don't we? Well, let me let me throw you even a bigger curveball. What about the minister? I'm not picking on Josh or anything, but we idolize the preacher sometimes. We idolize people. Yeah, we, we put them up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. That's, been service too long. A long time. <laughs> yeah. And so, so you get this idea that. God doesn't see this uh, uh, sequence that we see about who's in charge and who's this and who's that. You know, and we need to, obviously, if you don't comply with your boss or consequences of that, but in God's eyes, you're just as important as anyone. I like the way uh, Dallas Willard, I can't remember the book it was in. I'm trying to find it. Um, but he had this uh, <clears throat> discussion about the man who makes pallets, okay? And, he, and then the, the man's question to him was, I just make pallets. What's that got to do with serving God? Y'all know what a pallet is, right? The wooden thing that everything goes on. He said, you you make the pallets. Somebody else makes or gets the wood plane and ready to go. You put the, you make the pallets. What's the pallet do? Goes goes to the to the warehouse. The, where, the pallet's loaded with goods. The goods go on the plane or boat or or whatever it goes on and it's distributed throughout the world and the kid over in southern Indiana has lunch at school because you built that, you built that pallet. Okay, we tend to see our jobs irrelevant. as irrelevant. But the things that you do matter. The things you do as a person matter if i'm serving the lord and what i'm doing what does that mean about what i'm doing it's important it's important in a way it's, it's valuable huh in a way it's worship it's our worship uh that's the uh is the hebrews 12 1 and 2 um it's our acts our service is our act of worship so we're contributing to the world in god's name even in the most minute minute uh, Minutia of the things that we do. Yeah. Huh? Oh, sorry, I thought you hit. Well, 
God looks at everybody, Hitler, Dahmer, or whoever. He loved the world so much he gave for him. He gave for me. So regardless of what my position is in life, I need to let the light shine. Yeah. In that in that position. Right. right. And he'll 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 bring judgment upon Hitler. Yeah. Now let me ask you this question. Now, you go ahead, Mike. There's a saying, um, for a long time, sure. Everybody's not a preacher. Everybody wants to. Everybody has a sermon, right? Your life's preaching a sermon. Is that what you mean, Mike? Yeah. yeah. In other words, serve God with yeah. whatever profession you is. Jesus said, go over there, shall be baptized. Teach me to serve all the things of Go and preach the gospel where you're at. Great as you can get this thing together. Everybody is not a preacher. Everybody has. Oh, like that. Good, good, good stuff. So that's true with you. Back to what he was saying, you know, there are there are folks that they're never gonna listen to the preacher. Because he's a preacher. As soon as they find that out, their ears flow. But there's somebody that I can that may not ever listen to Josh. And there's a, and you're right, David. There's a sense in which both of you are on this on this same track that I was I was thinking about. Um, there are there's a sense in which being in ministry limits your outreach. You see what I'm saying about that? Yeah. Everybody's in this culture. do what? At least in this culture. culture. Yeah. Back in the day when it was respected, and you know, you, you look at the old Andy Griffith shows, and everybody knew that the. the preacher and everybody you know respected him and all that kind of the, the, the more our culture is going in the direction it's going the least respect there is people say oh you're a preacher i'm not what i noticed people I, people ask me what i do i don't tell them right off okay um but people will um I, who was this i was listening to a sermon the guy's talking about do i go in my cross out or my cross my cross under my shirt you know because people see your cross they see you oh you, you must be in ministry you must be uh, religious and not to hide it, but what do they immediately do? Put up a wall sometimes. Put up a wall, close down. You know, everybody cleans up their language. It's like before you walk in the door, everybody's blah, 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 and you walk in. It's all, you know, <laughs> vanilla. And it's like everybody, everybody adapts to you and is not, are not being themselves. What's the hindrance in that? I mean, I understand the respect, for, but what's the hindrance in that? Well, Does it happen when you walk in the door? At your work? Maybe. They don't want to associate me in, in certain areas. I've had that happen. You know, he's one of the good guys. Push him off to the side. Yeah, he's going to hinder my Friday night events. Yeah. Different kind of groups mm -hmm. in, in your workplace, mm -hmm. and you're either in this one or you're in the back one. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem to jail. Yeah. But what does it take? What does it take for salt to affect meat or whatever you're putting it on? What does it take for salt? It should be close. It has to be involved. It has to be a penetrate. It has to be involved in the in the soup or whatever you're putting it, it has to be part of it. And when we're when we're pushed away uh, from from things and from people and they're not we're not in the soup. I don't know if I'm making sense, but we, we can't influence the world. Somebody said something I couldn't hear who it was. The thing that we're not talking about here is times that simply the way we live and the things we do influence other people. Absolutely. That's uh, where, yeah, that's where we're going. Almost all of what yeah. we, I remember December 9, 2001, Vicki and I baptized <clears> the <throat> president. After we were baptized in Queen, a young lady got up and went up front. And she was baptized. And, you know, I didn't think they said about it. I never thought that I could be a 
an influencer of Becky that did it, but David Pearson came up and told us that what we did influenced her to go and do it. And we didn't know her. I still don't know her. I didn't know who she was. Um, and I don't even know if she still goes. But you just don't know who's yeah. watching. And you got, but being, and be, but being, what does Jesus say? Be in the world, but not of the world. Sometimes we're pushed out of the world where we can't be in the world to be part of the world. Is that make, I'm a, I hope I'm making sense. But yeah, but you you can sometimes influence people better than the preacher can. That's what I'm saying. And that's what David was saying, and I think that's what Mike was saying. You can you can you can get into places where people in full time quote, quote unquote ministry. Uh, can't impact uh, other people. Um, so here's a few things. I've got a few things I'd like for somebody to read. Um, can somebody do First Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12? Somebody will volunteer for that one. David got that one. Uh, somebody read Ephesians 4. And here's where we're going back to where the influence thing. Ephesians uh, 4, 28. And then somebody who wants that one? Gotcha. And then uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, 10 and uh, through 13. Somebody want that one? Gotcha. Great. Okay. And then uh, the last one, I'll, I'll just read the last one. So, all right, let's kick it off with 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12. And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, you should mind your own business and work for your hand, just as you told me, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent upon anybody. Whoa. How do we win the respect of outsiders? Mind your own business. Mind your own business. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh oh, I stepped on something. <laughs> Okay, how else do, how, how else do we, uh, and work hard with your hands. So with hard work and the things that we do, we gain the respect of people. Okay, and that's, that's, that's part of it. Um, and then Ephesians 4, 28. Okay. So it's not just don't steal anymore, but do something useful. Be productive. Be be somebody that, that contributes. Uh, and like we talked about earlier, that can be down to making pallets or whatever you're doing to contribute to society. Um, uh, and it, but, but the reason for it is not to make a bukus of, of money, but to what? Be able to share. Okay. Second uh, Thessalonians three ten through thirteen. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command: anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such per now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. So don't be busy bodies, be busy. Be doing something productive. Uh, not, not eating off other people's goods, right? Taking care of things. Now, sometimes we kind of throw this at people. I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Let me hold on to that. Be careful what you do with this text. Let me just say that for right now. Uh, Luke, Luke 8, 1 through uh, 3. Uh, and here's where I'm going with this. After I, I'm going to come back to that point in a minute. After this, Jesus traveled about from town to town and village, one village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. Listen up. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. Oh. 
Jesus wasn't supporting himself. Other people were supporting him. So we got to be careful what we do with that previous verse about people not working and not eating. Sometimes people get supported in what they're doing because they can't do both. Is that making sense? And so Jesus and his, who, who was the first, first keeper, by the way? Jesus. Judas, because he stole out of the money bag. I, was, uh, I don't know why Jesus let that happen. I know he knew it was happening. But, anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but they were supported by other people. So we got to be careful about throwing that verse at people that, that can't support themselves. Because there are plenty of people in our culture that need help. And there are plenty of people in our culture taking advantage of that. Right? Yeah. So we got to use discernment in that. Don't be that type of person that takes advantage of, of that kind of thing. It's what I think that's what that's saying about work. Oh, you're talking about ministry. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah, there are, there are people who say ministry shouldn't be paid. <clears throat> you know, Jesus, Jesus did it. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe I'll pay attention to that. But anyway, uh, I, I don't think you need a private jet. I mean, <laughs> like some of you guys, I mean, come on. Uh, uh, however, so, but work, wasn't work cursed at the fall? Okay. <coughs> we get that kind of twisted up, wasn't it? What happened at the fall when, when, when uh, uh, Adam and Eve fell from mercy of God? Work the land. Make a living. Work the land, make a living. But, but they were working before, right? They were in the garden. It's going to be hard now. Yeah. So before the fall, what were they told to do? Tend the garden. Tend the garden. Take care of the animals. They had work. <coughs> work is something that gives you a purpose. You know, it gives you something to be a part of and proud of. And it's, it's designed by God that way. The curse was that it's going to be hard. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Some days are really hard, right? Um, now we do work in a di we live in a different culture. Um, I remember growing up in some of my jobs. I'd go to work at, I'd leave the house at seven, be there at eight, work till five, six, sometimes twelve, whatever, and come home. Right? It was like boom, boom, boom. You knew where work was. What's wrong with our world now? Work never stops. You get emails on your phone twenty four seven. You get texts. You get all this stuff. All 24/7, and if you're working at home, you just you go from one room to the other. At one, you're you're at work, and then you're in the bathroom, and then you're eating lunch, and then you're having to play with the kids. And you're, it's all mixed up. You know, it's not like it used to be. It's kind of hard for people to to sort that out, which can become a problem. Um, and I don't know what the answer to that is, to be honest. I mean, you have to. We don't have boundaries around anything. You know, it's just, it's work is family and everything all combined together. And I think that's causing problems in our world, but I don't know what to do about it. I don't have the answer, but it's not like, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. You know, like you don't just go to work. You don't go to the factory and clock in, clock out. It's, just, you know, you have to figure out how to manage all that together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say it again. I'm sorry. I said a lot of times when you come home, you work harder. Yeah. Than you Go to work and get some rest. Yeah. 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 She said she's saying no. Yeah. Okay. Your, your your problem might be solved if we honor Sabbath. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> the rest, day of rest. Yep. Uh, and we don't have mm -hmm. that anywhere in society. And it's commanded. We forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, Christian, here's the thing I was, I was kind of boiling all this down to. I'm told we're supposed to quit at a court. Yeah, I might go five after. It's okay to go five minutes later. Okay. You said yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Christian employers and employees should live and work as Jesus would, reflecting integrity, honesty, dependability, mutual respect in the workplace. This gives a marvelous witness to those who do not know Christ. 
that was the, the point of the lesson for our little booklet there. But sometimes, you know, things get all mixed up and you're not, you're asked to do something that's not ethical and you have to make a decision not to be that, not to do that. Um, can we make too much of work? This is my last point. Sure. About work five minutes. Make work an idol. Okay. You can make work an idol. Yeah. Um, I, success. Over the years, you know, uh, back in the day, and this before, and no, nobody would know this person here back before I was even came here. Um, working with a young man who lived in a in a, I think it's a three story house, and he had the whole top place to himself. I mean, he's just like a, it's unbelievable house the way he described it. I never saw it, but he told me about it. But he was so lonesome and so down and depressed because he never saw his parents because they were working all the time to pay for it. You know, sometimes we get all things all twisted up and we get, you know, there's a problem sometimes when the work ethic becomes the work idol. That's a good way to put it. Um, so you got to be careful with that as well. Got to be a balance. Got to be a balance. Um, then I'll leave that. The, the Ecclesiastes passage we've been studying on on uh, uh, when, uh, Wednesday night. Yeah, talks about that. If you want to look at Ecclesiastes two seventeen through twenty six, talks talks about the, the you know sometimes the emptiness of, of work. But here's the way he ends it. I want to end this passage with this. <clears throat> Devote yourselves to prayer. Be watchful, thankful, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message we, so that, may, that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I'm in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, five and six in, the, in this closing section of our, of our passage here where it's one of the uh, uh, memory verses for DC and I remember the first group that I was in I would, I would say everything except for this, the full of grace and, and this guy said one of the guys in DC, you kind of keep each other accountable. He said, You're leaving something out every time. I said, What do you mean? You never say full of grace. I said, Whoa. Oh, you know, I need to look at that. You know, what, you know, what does it mean for our, our conversation to be full of grace with people? People you encounter, people you work with. If I'm always doing this to somebody, what is it? How is that going to influence my my influence on them? Point out. They're going to eventually want to stay away from you. They don't want to be around around that. So I got to be a person full of grace. We tend to be full of grace for ourselves, but shallow on everybody else's grace. I mean, our see our talk needs to be full of grace. People are listening. Um, you know, people and truth. Hmm. Full of grace and, and and the season was salt, so it's influencing. The truth is influencing people. Some, but sometimes we focus on one and we leave the other out. You got to be. You got to be this. You got to be somebody that's that. Uh, uh, your season, your conversations, full of grace and influential with with the salt. Um, so I, I thought that was interesting. Um, anybody heard last thing? Anybody heard of Brother Lawrence? Most of you aren't Catholic. Uh, that's a book that I read uh, probably in the 80s. Uh, he was a Catholic uh, priest that came to a monastery and he's trying to figure out life. He's trying how do I how do I, how do I be devotional and, and all this and, and all these other things that I'm doing. And basically, the, the thing he came down to was to start prayer in the morning. Ended at night and everything else in between is prayer. And he was working in the kitchen, washing dishes, and honoring God. And, and, his, and that was his prayer life. Everything. So we make this dichotomy between spirituality and life. and It's not there. You know, 
your whole life is a prayer. Your whole life is spiritual. Your whole life is is uh, uh, tuned in with God if we're doing it the way he meant for it to be, I believe. Um, yes? That's hard for me, but I have trouble with words right now. I have difficulty with me, but what's so important to me is that when you start telling other people what they need to do with God, to me, I consider that claim God. Instead of doing what you did. I think by demonstration in their life, people can see it on a daily basis. The, like, like the best earlier, uh, the, the demonstration, that's what you say. That's what you say. I said, I'd rather hear it, see it, than hear it. Yeah. Because sometimes this is your action. And we, when we walk with people in grace and mercy and, and live among them and, and be the kind of person we need to be, it can't help but influence people. Yeah. Very good. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I'm thank over you. time. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Scott. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs>